I think actually it was it was a pleasant return to politics and political discourse without the bitterness and name calling uh, that has really plagued American politics for the last decade or so, perhaps even longer than that. Um, for me, I thought it was quite a, a Midwestern feel to it. It was very polite. And the discussion for me was about policy and less about individuals, uh, which if we look at the fireworks of the presidential debate just three weeks ago, it's a very different flavor and character. Uh, and I think that that really is, for me, the, the most memorable part of the evening, that it wasn't the, um, the explosive nature that many predicted might happen. Well, as you say, a lot more substance issues and policies debated. Uh, with the first item on the agenda, the Middle East, how did the candidates' views differ on this? Well, Walsh well, so, so sidestepped the issue to a certain degree, and, and this is probably his weakest area. He mentioned to Kamala Harris before, he's mentioned to Kamala Harris in the past, that he's not a great debater, um, and that's been backed up by uh, Amy Klobuchar, who's the senator from Minnesota, who's a great friend of Tim Walsh, who would say he's a, a you know, great motivator, but not a great debater. Uh, and um, he sidestepped the issue to a certain degree, and he's called for uh, uh, strong leadership, whereas Vance was very committal in the to second Trump administration would very definitely back Israel's uh, actions in the Middle East. Of course, it's probably slightly more nuanced than, than, than that, but um, it was a, a very different approach from both. Foreign policy is probably Tim Walsh's weakest position in terms of the subjects that came up on the debate. Mm. At one point during the discussion on immigrants, the mics had to be cut. What happened there? Well, they started to talk over each other. And so it, it started to be the, the case where, and I think it was the only instance in this debate, whereas, of course, in a, in a presidential debate, the, the mics were cut when the other person was speaking. And I think that the fact that it only happens once is an indication of actually how polite and, and, and courteous they were to each other. Um, but it, it was just to maintain, uh, to ensure that uh, uh, neither party went over their time, um, but also that they didn't speak over each other and it descended into a, um, uh, an argument rather than debate. Now, both candidates also had to own up to past moments where they misspoke or they said they were wrong, with Walls clarifying whether he was in Tiananmen Square during the massacre and Vance commenting on him previously calling Donald Trump America's Hitler. Do you think either of them were convincing in this regard? Um, I think Walls probably spent too long saying I misspoke. Um, he sort of gave a biographical background to, to how we got come to that point. Um, Vance, I think, you know, Vance put a lot of the blame that he didn't actually misspeak, but he was misled by the media, um, which, you know, is that, that deflection of blame um, would have certainly affected many people's opinion of him. Interestingly, both of the, all the polls that I've seen after the event has shown that both uh, candidates' um, popularity or, or recognition and um, uh, uh, sort of approval rating has improved uh, since, since the debate. Uh, so they, they, they've made an impact, but could they have done it better? Absolutely, I think so. Did they make an impact where climate change was concerned? They kind of pivoted, uh, changed topics to the importance of keeping jobs in America from climate change. Did it all make sense to you? Uh, well, tr the Trump administration is very much economy first um, and climate uh, very late. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to say second, but a, a, an afterthought. Uh, whereas, obviously, the Biden administration has, has been a lot more... Um, vigorous with, in promoting greener uh, um, uh, uh, policies, uh, and that's likely to be continued under Harris. I don't think either of them really convinced me a great deal about what was going on, and I think that is some of that Midwestern attitude that we see from both the Ohioan senator and the Minnesotan governor. Uh, however, uh, climate change is going to be an issue, obviously, uh, going forward, but jobs at the moment, where we look at American politics, especially presidential elections, 
the economy is far more important and jobs is far more important uh, than climate change. So it's only natural that they put uh, job generation and, and safety of jobs at the forefront. And how big a topic is abortion access among American voters? Um, well, it depends on who, obviously, it depends on who you talk to. Um, uh, uh, so interestingly, in a debate, um, Vance tried to frame the Democratic Party as being pro-abortion, whereas, uh, as we heard in the clip earlier, you know, uh, uh, Walsh came out and said, no, we are, you know, we are pro-women, um, which is a very distinct, distinction, great distinction, I think, uh, and important to note. Um, I, Vance was very much talking about you know, we want to make people able to have children, be able to afford children, not necessarily give them the choice, uh, but to, to be able to have that uh, uh, option. Uh, whereas um, uh, uh, whilst was very much focused on uh, reproductive rights, it's going to be, I think, a crucial issue for the Democrats in certain states. We've seen a lot of states now enshrine it or begin to enshrine it within their own state constitutions, the right of choice. Um, whether Vance is able to, I mean, he did say that the Republican Party is not trusted on these issues. And he has to rebuild that trust. I think admittance of that is only part of the way. How they manage to re rebuild that trust with the American electorate, I, I, I can't see that, to be perfectly honest, especially when Trump celebrated the fact that the Roe decision was overturned. Mm. Well, it, the debate was an opportunity to get to know the vice presidential candidates. What's something we learned about each of them that we didn't know before this debate, do you think? Um, for many of them, it would, for, well, for many onlookers, obviously for people like myself have been quite in depth on these two candidates for a while. Um, there's not a great deal that we didn't know. Perhaps what we did know is the overlap, well, sorry, what we didn't know was the overlap between the two parties. In the Midwest, there's very, there's a great deal of where their views overlap and where they share similar concerns. Um, however, the, the you know the more extremes we get in terms of the two parties, the greater differences we get. I think from as individuals, I think we got to see perhaps uh, from Vance a more calmer, um, a more courteous side than we've seen before for a long time. Um, you know, there's very little mention of of, uh, of cat ladies, for example. There was no, there was no de derogatory attempts at, at, uh, at, at, at making Democratic voters to feel um, uh, alienated in any way. There was very much a case of trying to bring people on side, um, and I think he did a good job of that. I think we also probably saw that Vance put a good case forward that he is somebody to pick up the mantle when Donald Trump does step down from, from Republican politics. In terms of Tim Walsh, he's probably not well known across the United States until quite recently. So we've got to see some of his um, some of his more homely touch that he has about him. But that's probably only going to come out um, more and more on his actual tours around the United States as part of the campaign that is just five weeks away. Just lastly, did either of them come out on top? Do you think? Did either of them manage to sway uh, voters more than other, more than the other? I think Vance's refusal to acknowledge that Trump lost the 2020 election could be proved to be significant to even moderate Republicans who are concerned about the um the primacy of their institutions rather than political politics it's like party politics uh, and so we may well see that that uh it has an impact in terms of performance you put that slightly in front of waltz um however i think overall i think it was probably uh, a 50 50 affair um but it, i think that the overall winner i think is the, is the american people uh, because it shows that it is possible to have this political discourse um, without the violence and without the aggression and the bitterness that, that has been so evident over the last few, uh, few presidential elections. Mm. A good positive note to end on there. Dr David Townley, thanks so much for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you.